moment. Madness. Material. Mountain. Myself. Mixture. Memory. Message. Minute. Mightiness. Monologue. Marcel. Mind. Microcosmos. Movement. Mechanism. Milos. Mirror. Morphology. Minimalism. Myth. Montage. Masculinity Mosaic Motion Metaphor Mouth Museum Misery Measure Mother, mise en scène. Magic, mask. Motivation, Milena. Manifesto, mystery. Margin. Mobility. Mythology. Matter. Mission. Motive. Monotony. Mistake. Master. Magnifier. Mantra. M.
The life of human beings is full of contradictions. What a contradiction to seek in reality pictures of memories. Calling an image to mind is just regretting a certain moment. The reality I once knew no longer existed. Even from the realistic point of view, the places we long for at every moment occupy far more space in our real lives than the places where we actually are. Words give us a small, clear, and formed picture of objects. The language of words has never been so irreplaceably necessary. It has never reached the level of questioning, nor the obviousness of answering. Things can be reflected in sound, as they can in water or a mirror.
Our remembrance does not show memories in chronological order, but as a kind of reflection in which the parts are all mixed up. The life of human beings is full of contradictions. Most of our possibilities lie dormant because we rely on habit that tells us what it is right to do. So the possibilities are superfluous. We usually live in such a way that our being is reduced to a minimum, the longing to possess a whole landscape of memories. However much is within our recall, there is far more in our oblivion. It is likely that what is missing the first time is not understanding, but memory. The forms of human life are so diverse, so contradictory. Thought, associations, memories, they go on. But perhaps other worlds exist, more real than the world of reality. What is more poetic than Xerxes, son of Darius, when he orders the sea to be whipped for swallowing up his ships? The world is true for all of us, and different for each of us. You see, I am only interested in general truths. I talk about them as I would about the law of gravity. What a person is thinking only appears when it emerges onto his face. Man only exists in what he owns. He possesses only what is real for him. And so many of our memories, moods and thoughts disappear on travels so far from us that we lose sight of them. Then we can no longer collect them to make up the final reckoning of who we are. However, they have secret paths they use to come back to us. Although our memories belong to us, they are ours as a house is, with little hidden doors of which we are often unaware. So it takes a neighbor to open them. Then it happens that we enter our own house through an entrance we have never used before. Man is a creature who cannot move outside himself, who only knows others within himself. And if he says the opposite, he is lying. We exist alone. The life of human beings is full of contradictions. try to hang on to that piece of sky above your life. For although I have the feeling that we are always surrounded by our own soul, this does not mean it is a motionless prison. We strive to rediscover in the things that have become precious to us that bright flash of light in our souls that covered them. And we are disappointed when we realize that in the natural world, they have none of the charms that were, 
in our thoughts, bound up with certain ideas. It should be noted that the nature we show in another part of our life is not always, although often is, our true nature, developed or desiccated, strengthened or weakened. Sometimes it is a quite different nature, like a coat turned inside out. I suddenly stopped, unable to move a step, as sometimes happens when something not only catches our attention, but demands deeper study and occupies our entire being. Always try to hang on to that piece of sky above your life. It is not enough just to look on. I think that too many people today spend their time gazing at their navel as if it were the center of the world. At every moment, we should choose between health and reason on the one hand and intellectual delights on the other. Man creates himself by degrees. A person always forgets half of what he wants to say and repeats the simplest things over and over again. We should agree to make sacrifices, however painful, for what is dearest to our heart. How little a man knows what is in his heart. We want to be understood because we want to be loved. And we want to be loved because we ourselves love. As a reward for what we desire in our imagination, and what we try so hard and fruitlessly to discover, life sometimes gives us something we never even dreamed of. Like the future, the past cannot be experienced all at once, but bit by bit. The world was not created at one fell swoop. It takes place of necessity every day. Reality, even if it is inevitable, is not entirely predictable. At every moment we try to shape our life, but we do so, albeit against our will, by copying the features of the person we are, and not the person it would be pleasing to be. We would gladly devote our time to a human plant, if we were sure that this was worth the trouble. There you have it in a nutshell. You must know yourself at least a little. Are you worth the trouble or not? For only we can breathe life into things through believing in them, give them a soul which they then cherish and develop in us. It was only a reflection of my own thoughts. Always try to hang on to that piece of sky above your life.
Mira. matter.
material. Myself. We do not get over pain any other way than by suffering it to the bitter end. The only healthy thing for the body is happiness, while pain releases the forces of the spirit. As long as our life shall last, it is only when we suffer that our thoughts, forever in turmoil and tossed about by changes in direction as in a storm, are raised to a level where we can see all of that huge space ruled by its own laws, which we would not otherwise see, standing by a poorly set window, because happiness offers us only a monotonous view 
aimed too low. We can emerge from suffering if by nothing else than by concluding that it exists. The mind refuses to believe that there is any situation in life that cannot be resolved. What we need to drag forth, bring out into the light of day, are our feelings, our passions, or rather, the passions and feelings of all people. We do not get over pain any other way than by suffering it to the bitter end. A man becomes a moral being as soon as he is unhappy. Pain is mostly our body's need to become aware of a new state that disturbs it, a need to adapt our feelings to this state. Disease is the doctor we listen to most of all. Goodness and knowledge, the doctor to whom we only make promises, and pain, the doctor to whom we succumb. When someone believes for a long time that he is ill, he really becomes ill. Life knows how to punish a person. Perhaps each night in our dreams, we accept exposure to suffering that we consider to be worthless and unreal because we experience it in our dreams or we believe dreams to be unconscious. Often it is only a lack of creative spirit that stops us delving deeper into suffering. Yet the most horrific reality offers us not only suffering, but the joy of wonderful discovery, because it simply presents a new clear form of something we have always wanted without knowing it. Among the personalities of which we are composed, the most visible are not the most important. It is better not to know anything, to think as little as possible, and not to give jealousy the slightest importance. Unfortunately, in the absence of an external life, accidents are caused by the life within us. The things we most often mention in fun are those that are, on the contrary, painful. But we do not wish it to be seen that they give us pain. Maybe hoping that the person we are talking to, seeing how we joke, will believe that none of this is true. Man remembers truth, because truth has a name and ancient roots. Whereas a lie is invented on the spur of the moment and soon forgotten. A man does not always readily accept the tears he has caused to flow. We do not get over pain any other way than by suffering it to the bitter end.
The joy of the moment does not help us ensure the future. This is done by wise reasoning from the past. There is a resemblance between love and death, even more than in all other indefinite things that people are always repeating. Mind. What draws people together is not shared convictions, but a spiritual bond. Measure. 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 I felt the desire for life that is always reborn in us whenever we become aware again of beauty and happiness. Mind. Mind. Measure. For desire makes us more beautiful. We go forward with more confidence when we know that the reality outside us creates desire, even if it remains beyond our reach. Nothing is so attractive in growing close to someone as the distance that divides us. There is a resemblance between love and death. But when nothing remains from some distant past, after the death of its living beings, the destruction of things, only the fragile but more durable, non-material, lasting, more faithful senses of smell and taste remain. Remain for a long time. What makes us so happy lies in the heart. What draws people together, something we somehow manage to preserve forever and which we later fail to notice, until something happens to disturb it. I felt the desire for life, for neither sorrow nor desire tries to analyze itself. It simply satisfies itself. Mind. Measure. We say what we feel the need to say. What makes us so happy lies in the heart. Reality is our most cunning enemy. It strikes at that point in our hearts where we least expect it and where we have provided no defense. The dead only live on in us. 
and we constantly beat ourselves, remembering with pain the blows that we inflicted on them. I heard myself weeping. that creatures who played a great part in our life suddenly fly out of it forever. They come back and sometimes land, making people believe that love is starting again before leaving us forever. Therefore we come upon all sorts of things in our memory. It's like a pharmacy, a chemical laboratory, where our hand accidentally alights on a soothing drug here or a dangerous poison there. think about what will happen after we die, don't we project ourselves as living beings, by mistake? Suffering is the best thing we can encounter in life. We shall view death without terror. Almost as a kind of liberation. For however close these two hours are, the hour of truth always tolls before the hour of death.